Hello, in this video we're talking about LR parsing for writing our own compilers. And in this video series I'm going to show you how to create a state machine, a parsing table and how to use that parsing table. This is the first example, this is the easy one. If you need a better example, check out the example number two. Let's get started. This is a rule set. In a rule set we have non-terminal symbols and terminal symbols. The capitals are the non-terminal symbols, kind of like, um, like variables that stand for something else. So in this case, the S would stand, could stand for A and B, or the B could stand for D. Kind of like if you have regular expressions where a dot can stand for like every character that I cannot draw here, or you can have something like A to Z, like this is a series of characters, but they stand for something else. Like this kind of variable, this is what this S and B means. I hope you get the idea by that. Okay, that being said, let's, uh, because these are rules, let's say put in some numbers. This is our rule number one, this is our rule number two, and this is our rule number three. And we need another technical rule here, the rule number zero, because it's so cool, it's zero. First of all, what does the dollar sign mean? It means kind of like the end of input, the end of file. And why do we choose S here and not B? So why is this state not something like this? The reason is that the first rule that was written here was the S A B rule. And it's like of a common understanding that the first rule written here is the root rule. So when you have the parsing table, then everything goes on from here, from the first rule that's standing here. And the technical rule is always using the first rule. This is the reason why we use the S. Okay, that being said, Let's start writing our state machine. Maybe when you check out other stuff, then you find something like this. You start with the first rule and then you go on like with the closure of S. And I never understood really what is this closure stuff, but I figured you don't need to understand it. What I advise you to do is start with the rule number zero, the technical rule. That's the most important rule, okay? You start with the rule number zero. Let's write it down here. And what's very important is you need a marker the marker tells you where you are in parsing. This becomes more clear when we keep on going. And this is a special case at the beginning. The marker is standing in front of a non-terminal, in front of this variable thingy. And every time that happens, you have to check out in the rule set all the rules with the same non-terminal in the beginning. So in this case, the marker stands in front of the S. So we search all the rules with the S at the beginning and we find out that the rule number one has this one. And again, we make a marker, A, B. And then we have a first rule, uh, sorry, a first state for our state machine. And that's pretty good. So let's get started. The rest is not too hard, but let's do it together. Imagine you have the input S, then the marker goes on by one character and stands now in front of the dollar sign. And because the dollar sign is like the end of input, this also becomes our final accepting state. So we make two circles around it. I hope you learned that. And if it's not S, then the input might be A. And like in the S case, the marker goes on by one character and it's a B, not a dollar sign. And again, we have this special case now. This marker is standing in front of a non-terminal symbol, uh, like this variable thing. So we check out all the B rules in here and we write them down as well. But as these are new rules, we have to make a new marker here. And that's the next state. Okay, let's try to analyze, analyze this one first. Imagine we have the input B. Then the marker, like I said, goes on by one. Now the marker, the marker is at the end. And because the marker is at the end, we have a reduction here. A reduction means you have several symbols and you replace them with only one symbol. So because we have a reduction, we write reduction and we reduce by using rule number one. Let's erase that again. Okay, nice. Let's look at the next one. B. Imagine we have C as input. Then like the above, the marker goes on by one, standing in front of the B. And now again, we have to check all the Bs here. And note that we have the same rule again here. But this time the marker is at a different position 
which kind of makes it a different rule. Okay, this is our next state. And I'm running out of space. Okay, no, let's first finish this state. We have this last rule in here that we want to care about. We write it down here. Imagine we have the input D. Then the marker goes on by one, and this is our state. And again, we have, like in this case, we have a reduction, so we write down here reduction. In this case, we have a reduction with rule number three, so we write the three. Okay, let's care about this one here, monster. Uh, let's start with the bottom, because that's the most easy one. Imagine we have the input D, we just go on over here, and we're finished writing. Imagine we have the input C. Let's talk about this rule, so input C. Okay, then this marker will go on by one. And the marker stands in front of this non-terminal symbol in this in front of this variable thing. So we write all the, the other rules, the B rule here and the B rule here. And we figure out that this rule is actually the same, uh, the state would be actually the same as this state. So we don't need to write it and then like uh, optimize it but instead we just circle around input C okay last case the most top case input B sorry we have really not much space in here then we end up with this state and again the marker is at the end so we have a reduction in this case by rule number two or with rule number two and that's it we finished our state machine Check out the next video for creating the parsing.